Hello. Today, we're going to talk about how to use SWIM in your IDE, specifically VS Code. SWIM's VS Code plugin allows you to create docs right in your IDE and sync them when code changes, as well as find them next to the code when they're most relevant. As developers ourselves, we know how important it is to have documentation when you need it most. But where do we start? Also, how easy is it to make sure that our documentation stays up to date when our code changes? In this video, we're going to answer each of these questions. Let's start off by logging into your Swim account. If you don't have an account, please go ahead and sign up to create your workspace and connect your Swim plugin to VS Code. Make sure that when you create the account and during the onboarding flow, you can either take the tour or go ahead and skip it to the account creation view. After you create the account, come back to the plugin. So let's go ahead and log in. We'll allow the extension. We'll go ahead and authorize VS Code to access Swim. All right, great. Notice that upon logging into Swim, there was a small amount of indexing to make sure that all of your Swim docs were recognized. After the installation, you'll notice that the Swim plugin is located on the left panel. In order to get started and operate with Swim in VS Code, you'll need to have a repository within VS Code open as the project. Additionally, it will have to be a valid Git repo with a remote. If this repo is not part of the Swim workspace, you'll see an option here to connect it right in the Swim panel. Since this is your first time logging into Swim, you won't see any documents yet, but as you begin to create some, they can be found in this repo docs tab here. To go over our Swim menu here, you'll notice that you have the option to link out to our web app. You can create a new doc right here, and you can also check the status of all Swim docs by clicking this button. Clicking this button will come in handy when you refactor a lot of code that is referenced or code coupled with any Swim document in this repo. If any doc becomes outdated through your refactor, we're gonna let you know right here if there are any files that need to be reviewed. And pretty soon, we'll add some watchers here that notify you of outdated docs with less effort. Additionally, if you have questions about how Swim works, you can link out to our doc site here, as well as sign out from the plugin right here. We also have some Swim commands that you can initialize with command or control P, greater than sign, type Swim, and you'll see that you can show Swim to bring up the plugin or as well as create a doc from anywhere within your repository. Before we create our first Swim document, we're aware that code formatters are very popular amongst developers. We request that you please exclude Swim documents from them as any modifications to the Swim document can trigger false positives when it comes to maintaining the code coupled elements within your Swim document. All right, let's start off by creating a doc. Click Create. We give our doc a title. Let's call it how to add a command. We can either press enter or click save. Notice that the file closed and reopened. That's because when you create a swim document, it's automatically saved as an untitled file in the swim folder. When you save the new title, swim renames this file based on your entry. Remember, each Swim document is simply a markdown file that exists in this .swm directory where all Swim docs live alongside this Swim.json file. It's important to note that your viewing experience will be much richer when you open a Swim document through the plugin or any Swim links in the IDE. Please don't try to modify any of the raw markdown of a Swim file as it may break some functionality. The Swim editor is an enhanced markdown editor which has a lot of additional functionality that's made for developers. For perspective, I'll go ahead and open Swim here and see this existing document, and you'll notice that we'll be able to have this rich viewing experience. If I were to go ahead and close that and go to my file tree and open the markdown file, you'll see that the format in this raw markdown is a little bit more complex, but we want to avoid this from breaking any functionality. So go ahead and modify these docs by going straight to your plugin. So let's open up our document, which we are creating. Let's initialize our file with our slash command. The slash command is going to be your friend throughout the lifecycle of using Swim. And this will help us see what options are available to us. And you'll notice that we have traditional markdown options as well as some unique Swim commands. Our code coupled elements are going to be identified here. And you'll see them as code snippets, smart tokens, and paths, as well as diagrams right here. 
So we'll get into what a diagram is a little later down the line. But a code snippet is essentially your code coupled element that highlights the lines of code. Think of your traditional code block, but this is a tracked code snippet. Your smart token will be your one word value. Think your classes, your variables, your methods that you need to highlight throughout your explanation of a snippet or your document. And a path is a path. So anytime any one of these three values or code coupled elements changes, then Swim is going to go ahead and maintain that document as well as notify you when something is outdated. So let's go ahead and select code snippet. The first thing that Swim will tell us is, hey, go and search for a file and select some code. So let's do that. So I can select whichever values I'd like. I'm going to go ahead and highlight these four lines. And if I go back to my swim doc, I'll notice that they were highlighted here. And I can very easily add them right to my document. So let's go ahead and split this view. And now we see that we have our snippet on the right, our source code on the left. And now it's going to become very easy for me to continue either looking through source files to build docs for existing features or build from scratch and select the appropriate code as I'm building to add it to my swim doc for future knowledge transfer. Let's actually go ahead and save this file and exit out of it. An interesting point to note is that there's a wave icon here that's next to the snippet that we just selected. If I hover over, I actually see that there are two documents that are referenced here. That basically means that any time a snippet exists within a swim document, those wave icons will appear next to each snippet. And so all I have to do here as a developer is go ahead and select the document that I want to review as I come across this code snippet. And in this case, we started by adding this document here. So let's go ahead and click it and it opens side by side as well. This is very convenient when it comes down to working because you'll have the doc on one side and the source code on the other. It's not mandatory for this configuration to operate like that. If you did want to, you can go into your VS code settings and there's a section for swim where you can actually change this configuration. All right, so let's go back to our doc. All we have to do is begin to explain our code snippets and the logic as to why something was written, as well as what to focus on. So let's begin by giving our doc a little bit more of a general explanation. In this doc, we want to learn how to add the command to Git's CLI. We want to go ahead and explain this snippet. Every command has a file with the corresponding name within the my built-in folder. Okay, I actually want to make this a code coupled element. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the my built in folder word and initialize with my slash command, select path, and go ahead and look for the my built in folder or search it. My underscore built in. There we are. Let's go ahead and click it. Confirm. Okay, now we have a code coupled path. And this file includes a definition of the command, and in this case, the command add. And I want to make that a smart token. So we can go ahead and begin by typing with our slash command. You'll see the smart token command is there, and that will initialize a backtick. So you can initialize a smart token with a backtick, or type slash and then select smart token. We begin by typing the CMD, and you'll notice that we have multiple results. The first set of results we'll always have is anything that's referenced in this snippet, as well as this document. From there, Swim is going to search the entire repository for references of CMD. In this case, I know it's command add. I can go ahead and click it to confirm. And now we've successfully added a smart token. Great. Now we have three code coupled elements in this document. If I save this file, then I know that this markdown file will be part of my change log and we're good to go. So from here, we can add our next code snippet with our slash command or initialize with one of these quick actions here. Select code snippet. And now we're going to go ahead and select a file that we don't have open. So let's look for built in H. There it is. Great. Let's move this over. And from here, we're going to want to select this line here. Great. 
if you only select partial lines, Swim will recognize the entire line. So if you forget a letter or a character, it won't matter. We'll select the entire line for you. We can add that to the document. And let's add our explanation. Perfect. We can go ahead again and change this to a path. Let's move down, add our last snippet, which is going to be in git C. Let's move this over and let's go down to the relevant snippet we want. Okay, here it is. Let's select these two lines. Add it to the doc. All right, great. Now we've added all three snippets. Now let's add our description again. And we want to highlight this add command so we can initialize our smart token here. This is the line we want. And let's make command struct also a smart token. Perfect. And lastly, command. All right, we've added all of our relevant explanations as well as code coupled smart tokens, paths, and our snippets, of course. Each one of these code coupled elements is what's going to help Swim identify any elements that have been outdated. Lastly, we want to add a code coupled diagram to our document. So we enter our slash command and you can see that once you select diagram, you'll also be able to start from one of our templates and then modify its contents. Here are the multiple quick start options in the top right. You can use a sequence diagram. You can create a flow chart. You can create a Gantt chart, perhaps a user journey. There's a lot of flexibility here. And if you're familiar with mermaid syntax, then you can copy and paste or begin to write any of the diagram structures that you want to explain. I'm going to go ahead and paste a pre-made diagram here. Now that looks great. The best part about using diagrams within Swim is the fact that you have smart tokens. These code coupled elements are gonna ensure that your diagrams stay up to date as well. So there are many smart tokens that we referenced earlier above in their snippets, but we want to have them show up in our diagram and our flow here. So let's go ahead and change a few of these words to smart tokens. So this add command can change to an add smart token. We can go to run setup and delete that. Let's search for run underscore setup. And there it is. So we can code couple that. Do the same for commands. Oops. There we are. Prefix as well. Perfect. And prefix here. And lastly, exit status. Wonderful. Now when we minimize this diagram, we have our explanation for a developer who is learning about this flow. And when you click into it, you'll notice that each one of these smart tokens is code coupled within the diagram. And if I were to click a smart token, I see exactly where it comes from here on 485 within this repository in Git C. If I click commands, I see that it also came from Git C. If I click add, I see it came from Git C, but at 485 as well, all at different points throughout this file. Here's another one where prefix was highlighted from built-in age. So you have a lot of flexibility to reference source code in multiple fashions throughout your explanation and more importantly, your knowledge transfer. Pretty amazing. So now that we've completed our document, we're gonna go ahead and save this file and we're gonna close it. Remember that because Swim is a markdown file, this is documentation as code. This workflow is exactly what you're used to. Now you see here that within the change log for source control, this markdown file was created. And all you have to do is continue building all of your projects. And then when you commit your projects and your source files, you can also commit them together with your swim documents. And once you do that, the rest of your team will have all of your code couple documents, as well as these wave icons that appear next to your snippets. This is basically a game changer when it comes down to documentation and finding it when you need it most. The reason is most times when you want to learn about something, 
You may have documentation, but the question is, is it in a location where I know how to search for it? Will I query the right keywords to find the right document? Is the document reliable? Is it up to date? With the amount of times that developers refactor projects, it's highly likely that it will be outdated. With Swim, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Because we're working in the IDE, you can always search for documentation and how you would normally find files. Remember, this is documentation as code. Since recording this video, we've made an update to our Swim plugin. In addition to your native VS Code search, you can also search for Swim documents right from the plugin. Enter your value and any Swim document that references that value will show up and you can very easily navigate right to that document from the plugin. The main difference here is you'll be able to search for Swim documents without any noise from any other files within your repository. Just as you see here, if I was to search within VS Code, I have this reference here from Git C, as well as these other two documents here. And if I open the Swim document right from the native search, I'll have the raw markdown version of the Swim document. So it's definitely much easier for you to search straight from the plugin and get all of the documents that reference this value. Now that we've covered our updated search functionality, let's jump back to the original demo. And of course, these wave icons here will always indicate when there's relevant docs. Now I can get all the context I need without having to leave the IDE. And more importantly, I can also see the next step in the flow of code. If I came across this particular snippet, I understand that, I have the explanation, I now know why somebody wrote something. Perhaps there are some examples here as well that are live to the code, depending on the use case. But I do see here also that the very next step within this flow that I may need to understand is this snippet from built-in H. I can very easily click the snippet, Swim will open the file for you and show you that snippet. I can go back to the Swim document, go to Git C, click that file, and it'll open it for me as well. This functionality is going to be massive because it really does help me get a walkthrough of the flow being explained, and it will reduce the amount of time to transfer that knowledge for me to be a better and more efficient developer. But now what happens when somebody makes changes to the code, which is referenced in a code coupled element in a swim document? Let's go ahead and experiment. We'll see here that if we go to add C, let's go back up, we'll click this snippet open the file, move it over. All right, now we have lines 475 to 478. Let's go ahead and change command add to my underscore command add. We'll save that file. Let's also add a parameter actually. We'll call it param1, save it. And let's go ahead and click the swim document that's here to the right. Notice that Swim verified all of the code coupled elements within this document with the latest source file updates. Here, all we have to do is see changes here from command add to my command add, as well as this prefix here ending within the parameter. And you can see here that I added param one. So the next step for us is to just reconcile the changes that were made within the Swim doc to make sure that it remains updated even before we push our commits. By accepting these changes, we go ahead and save our file and swim updated your markdown document. And these changes will be reflected in your source control. Going back to the beginning of the video, if you remember, we mentioned we can always click check status to check and verify all swim documents are up to date. So let's go to the plugin and click check status. Okay it looks like there was a change that we didn't reconcile. And the change here is the my command add smart token. And as you notice here, within these two docs that exist, only one is outdated. And that simply means that the changes that were made, again, were only reflected in this one document because it references specific source code. Now here, we did reconcile this snippet. So it is up to date, as you see here but we never made a change to the command add here, which was changed to my command add for this smart token. So all we have to do is click in and you'll notice that the change went from what we just mentioned. So we can accept that auto sync suggestion and now we're reconciled. So let's go ahead and save the file and then go back and check the status again. Perfect. 
Now our swim docs are all reconciled and up to date. From here, once we're done creating, all that's left is to go ahead and commit and push to remote and we're good to go. Amazing. That concludes the training for this video. To recap, with Swim's VS Code plugin, you'll be able to create and modify Swim docs as you build or refactor code. You can discover existing documentation in your code base and IDE. You can switch back and forth from your code to your docs seamlessly, as well as review annotations when writing new code. You can eliminate context switching to external applications. And lastly, you'll be able to maintain the freshness and reliability of your docs so all devs can transfer knowledge without worrying about outdated docs. Be sure to join our community Slack channel at swim.io slash Slack. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to help. Until the next training, happy swimming.